In this demonstration, we will be using tracker to determine the momentum of each object in an air pack collision. Let's begin with 1D collision for one of my classes. So I'll open one of the videos, but I will start with variation 3 because I already started with other variations. And then I'll start with trial 1. Let's set the coordinate axis and I'll put it here. Actually, it doesn't matter where you put the coordinate axis because in calculating momentum, what is important is the velocity and not the position. You can actually position the coordinate axis anywhere for this experiment because our only concern is the velocity. Next, let's set the calibration of this entire video by including a calibration stick. So I'll click shift. Notice that when I click shift, the cursor becomes a square then click on this part you can draw a vertical line from this point up to this point now it's all right if the line you've drawn is not perfectly vertical because you can actually change its position so once you s think that you have positioned the calibration stick in a perfectly vertical manner then you can change its length just key in 1.0 because we assume that this calibration stick or this point here up to this point has a length of 1 meter next let's try to truncate the video or edit the video settings basically when i play this notice that during the first few frames the object is not yet moving i'll use this as the start frame so right click then start frame next i'll drag this near the end so that I can see if some of the frames here are not necessary. I'll just keep on clicking this step forward button and from what I can see all of the frames are necessary until the end so I'll include everything here. So again let me return to this position. So next the exercise requires us to have 10 frames before the collision and 10 frames after the collision. So notice that this is too many frames to process. I'll just change it to how about 9? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then collide. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I think that's enough. If we have 8 to 12 frames for before and after collision, I think that is sufficient. So next, I'll now create two tracks. One track is for M1 or mass sub 1 and the other one is for mass sub 2 or m2 so i'll click this create track button and choose point mass so notice that the plot area and table area will now monitor our track for mass a but i'm going to use auto tracker i'll click auto tracker i'm going to click Control shift notice that my cursor will become a circle and then i'll click on this region so basically this will be my template now once i click that region notice that the auto tracker window saves that template but apparently I have to click search next so that it will search the same pattern or small region of pixels on the next frame. When you click search next, auto tracker will find a match of that template on the next frame. When you are satisfied with the match, you just keep on clicking search next until you exhaust all the frames. So click search next. And every time you click search next, it updates or it records the current position and time of this mass or m sub 1. Next, I'll return to the start of the clip again. Then create another track for mass 2 or m2. I notice that the plot area and the table area now updates for mass b. So again, I click control shift and click on this region. Notice that the auto tracker was able to find a match on the next frame. So just continue clicking search next. When I Click search next for this specific point in time. Notice that auto tracker was not able to find a match for the next frame. So when you encounter this kind of error, just click Control Shift again and just choose a new template. After that, continue clicking search next until you exhaust all the frames. And let's record first the velocity or the data points for mass 1 before the collision. I'll update what is being displayed here in plot area and table area. I'll choose mass A and mass b so our goal is to collect data points before collision for mass 1 or m1 i have to monitor the time wherein m1 will collide with m2 
apparently this is the time 2.7 seconds so basically this is the only relevant data we need to copy to excel file from time 0 to time 2.7 i'll copy this data set i did not copy the y position here because we assume that the collision takes place in one dimension so i'll copy this set of data points paste it here so notice that i don't need this fields so i'll clear this up so i already arranged the excel file and then just plot this time versus position data set insert so i'll just rename this next i'll insert the trend line equation so chart tools design add chart element trend line more trend line options apparently based on our graph this is linear so we choose linear and then display equation and r squared on the chart so i'll just increase the font size so again as you recall the slope of an x versus time plot or position versus time plot is the velocity so the slope here 0 0.3441 is the velocity of m1 before the collision next i want to record the velocity after the collision so let me return to our tracker so while at this point this is the part where m1 and m2 will collide then after that they will now have a new set of velocity so this is the only data points i'm going to copy and then just clear this because i don't need this i'm going to insert a plot for this data set then just rename the title then show the trend line equation again chart tools design add chart element trend line more trend line options display equation in r square the slope of this plot is the velocity of m1 after collision it's 0 0.183 and this is the velocity that i will record i'll write it down in the table let's record the velocity of m2 after collision because apparently based on the video the velocity of m2 is zero before collision let's look at the plot and data points for m2 which is symbolized by mass b in this tracker so when i click step back notice that we are returning to some previous motion of the two ball when i continue clicking step forward this is the time where they collide and then when i continue to click step forward it will bring me to the frame after collision so again based on this clip this is the part wherein m1 and m2 has collided so i'm going to choose data points from this point onwards looking at the table below this means that i have to record data points from 3.6 seconds onwards so i'm going to copy these data points and paste it here again i don't need these details i'm going to clear this data and i'm going to plot this time versus position data points i'll just update the chart title then i'm going to insert the trend line equation chart tools design and chart element trend line more trend line options display equation and chart the slope of this equation is the velocity of m2 or the speed of m2 after collision so you're going to do this for all the variation and for all the trials until you fill up all these fields and then calculate for the mean value of the speed or velocity and then calculate for the momentum by multiplying the speed or the velocity with the mass of the air pump after this now the remaining tables are easy to fill up because you just need to do some calculations for the momentum and kinetic energy let's then consider two-dimensional collision for my other class open tracker and load the video of collision i'll start with trial one adjust the video settings by first clicking on step forward notice that in the first few frames no object is moving in such case we will not include this in our analysis once the object move, return to that frame and set that frame as the start frame by right-clicking on this slider and then choosing start frame. Let me drag this slider near the end of the video clip to examine if some of the frames at the end are also not necessary. Click step forward to check if each frame contributes to the motion of each object. 
It seems that they are all important so there's no need to trim the videos near the end. Let's go back to start frame and add coordinate axis. We then add the calibration stick to give the tracker an idea about the relative dimensions of the system. Hold shift then click on this part and then on this part. And then update the length to 1 meter. You can actually position the origin of the coordinate axis anywhere since our goal here is to calculate the momentum of the objects and hence only velocity matters and not the individual x and y position data points. In my case, I'll just reposition the origin here so that the motion before collision will take place in the first quadrant. After collision, it wouldn't really matter. Let's then adjust the step size of the frame in such a way there will be 5 to 10 frames before collision and another 5 to 10 frames after collision. Click step size. Click other. Let's try step size of 10 frames. Hit OK. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, collide. At least in this case, we have 10 frames. Then after collision, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Again, what we need to have is a range of 5 to 10 frames. So our step size is already sufficient to produce the desired number of frames. Reset to start frame by clicking this button. Let us now record motion data by focusing on mass 1 first. Click create track. Point mass. Right click mass A and rename it to mass 1. then enter. So mass 1 track will be the track for this red object. Click again create track point mass right click mass A and rename it to mass 2. Hit enter and then right click mass 2 click color Choose your desired color. Here, I'll just choose blue. Then OK. So mass 2 track will be the track for this green object. In the plot area and table area, let's display data for mass 1. Click drop down, then choose mass 1. And click drop down in the table area to choose mass 1. Also, click mass 1 in this track control window. Notice that we also need to update this though it wouldn't really affect our simulation because this is a pre-recorded video. Based on the given, mass 1 is 0 0.15 kilograms. So enter. We are now set to collect data for mass 1. So click auto tracker. Now in the auto tracker window, in the track control drop down, choose mass 1, though it's already selected. Now your goal here is to choose a region of pixels that auto tracker will monitor for each frame. The movement of such pixels will give info about the object's time and position data points. Hold control shift then click on this spot. Notice that for our chosen template, the auto tracker was able to find a match from the next frame. 
I chose this spot because when mass 1 and mass 2 collide, this region will not be affected. In other words, the green mass will not overlap our template. Continue clicking search next until we scan all frames. Notice that we have an error here. Again, when you encounter problem like this, just hold Control shift and click on pixels template again. Then continue clicking search next. Now we reach the end frame. Let's now record the track for mass 2. Return to start frame. In this little track control window, click mass 2. Notice that the info here is updated based on the given mass 2 is 0 0.30 kilograms in the plot area choose mass 2 and in the table area choose to display mass 2 also in the auto tracker window in this track drop down choose mass 2 again choose a region of pixels that auto tracker will monitor for each frame the movement of such pixels will give info about the object's time and position data points Hold Ctrl Shift then click on this spot. For our chosen template, the auto tracker was able to find a match from the next frame. Similarly, I chose this spot because when mass 1 and mass 2 collide, this region will not be affected during collision. In other words, the red mass will not overlap with our template. So continue clicking search next until we scan all frames. Let us now transfer time and position data points in a spreadsheet. Return to start frame. So in the track control window, click mass 1. In the plot area, choose mass 1. And in the table area, choose mass 1. Let's use step forward to determine which among mass 1 data points belong to the frames before collision. Notice that the highlighted point in the plot area updates as well. During this point, the object collides. So we want to collect data points before collision, so I return to previous frame. The table area tells me to collect data from time 0 up to this point which is 2.667 seconds. So let me copy this data. Highlight, right click, copy selected cells and choose as formatted. Open the spreadsheet, right click then paste. I'll clear these contents because they are already displayed here, time, x position, and y position. So highlight, right click, then clear contents. Don't forget to regularly save the spreadsheet. Now this is the data for mass 1 or mass A before collision. Let's then grab data points for mass 2 or mass B before collision. Return to tracker. In the plot area, display mass 2. And in the table area, display mass 2. The plot area suggests that we should copy points from time equal 0 to time 2.667 seconds. Because this is the point before collision. From the table below, we should copy data points from time equal 0 up to 2.667 seconds. Open spreadsheet. Paste it under mass 2 or mass B. Time and position data points. Again, clear these unnecessary contents. Let's now collect data points after collision.
Return to tracker in the plot area, choose mass 1. In the table area, choose mass 1. In the plot area, this is the point where the objects collide because after this, mass 1 changes direction. To gain better data set free from abrupt changes, I'll copy data points from this point onwards. Now, when I click this point, the field here says that this point is equal to a data point at time t equals 3.33 seconds. So, from the table below, we should copy data points from time 3.33 seconds onwards until the end of the frame. So, again, I'll paste it here. I'll clear this unnecessary contents. For mass 2 or mass B data points after collision, in the plot area, choose mass 2 and in the table area, choose mass 2. Similarly, in the plot area, this is the point where the objects collide because after this, mass 2 changes direction. To gain better data set free from abrupt changes, I'll copy the data points from this point onwards. So apparently, these are the data points after collision for mass 2. So again, I'll copy this data points starting from 3.33 seconds until the end of the frame. Now that we have collected position versus time data points, let's calculate the x component velocity of mass 1 or mass A before collision. To do this, plot x versus time data points. Highlight, then click insert, scatter plot. At this stage, no need to edit the chart. We only need to display the equation. So select the line, in chart tools, click design, add chart element, trend line, then more trend line options. Based on the plot, the data points display a linear behavior, so we choose linear, and then display equation on chart. Let me increase the font size of this equation, so highlight, then click home, then change the font size to a larger one. Remember that this plot is a time versus x position plot. Therefore, the slope of its graph is the x component velocity of the motion. So here, I'll copy 0 0.197 here. Then I'll delete this chart by clicking delete or backspace. To get the x component of momentum, symbolized by p sub x sub a, just multiply this mass with this velocity. Let's now determine the y component velocity of mass a before collision. Highlight time column, then 
hold control then highlight Y column. Insert scatter plot. Again, display the equation of this plot to get the slope. This slope would be V sub Y. Select line, chart tools, design, add chart element, trend line, more trend line options, then display equation on chart. The slope here is negative 0.0601 and this is the V sub Y or the Y component velocity of mass A before collision. So I put it here. Negative 0.0601. Enter. Don't neglect the negative sign here because velocity is a vector and the sign gives us an idea about the direction. Again, to calculate the y component of momentum for mass A, which is here symbolized by P sub y sub A, just multiply this mass with this y component velocity. And do the same for the x component velocity of mass 2 or mass b before collision and x component momentum of mass b before collision. Also for y component velocity of mass b before collision and then y component momentum of mass b before collision. And of course, compute for its counterpart after collision and do it for all trials. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.